Hey everybody, this is Rustin Rose with Metal Nation, joined today by our friend Michael Del Pizzo of Sunflower Dead to chat about the la- the band's latest single, Turn Away. It's, it's been a long time since you and I chatted. So much has changed for the band, and I want to talk about that in a minute, but in the interim, how have you been? I've been alright, my friend. I have been just working my butt off, and uh, you know, the band is doing well. You know, we're just happy to be continuing and having a shot. Absolutely. Like I said, big things happening, but it, since we last spoke, the makeup's gone, new rhythm section, you signed with uh, Dave and Tom's label, EMP. You put out the yep. fantastic coma last year. What's the journey been like since it's time to get weird? Oh, man, what a journey it was. It was, uh, well, we had a, a great touring cycle for it's time to get weird, and then when we finished that touring cycle, we came home with no band. It was just two guitar players and a vocalist. We we were bandless, rhythm sectionless, and and we were trying to figure out what we needed to do. And so, what we did was we wrote a new record called Coma. We dropped the makeup, like you said, because we felt that we just didn't need that attire with the new music we wrote. You know, the music kind of spoke for itself. And then um, we we got a new rhythm section by accident. We didn't even audition anyone. We just kind of played some people the so- the new songs. And Christian Oldie Wolbers from the Fear Factory, the original bassist, wanted to be in the band. And we got this guy named Brett Weir on drums who did some touring with Red Sun Rising and a couple other bands. And, and um, he just kind of popped out of nowhere. And then we had a band and signed a record deal and put the record out. And, you know, here we are working it. Yeah, a fantastic record, too. A lot of aggression on that one. Was that sort of purposeful, or did that just sort of where your head was at at the time? I mean, we came home from touring the It's Time to Get Weird album pretty pissed off. There's no doubt about it. And it just it just seemed like that's what needed to come out. I know I was thoroughly unhappy with how the band was being perceived. I was unhappy with the way certain members were that were no longer in the band. And I was just pretty agitated about things, and so were the other guys. And and we just put it into the music and, and let it come out. And it certainly did. It was like it went from time to get weird to time to get serious. <laughs> That's exactly it. Like, we literally, you know, we put the yang to the yin here, and we just, it was the exact opposite of what we did on the last record. And it's very, very, very serious to the point where we even had discussions lyrically about, like, the guys were like, uh, on the past two records, I kind of you know, hid my my personal emotions behind metaphor. And on this album, there's no metaphor. I, I pretty much just say things straight out. And that's what the guys asked me to do. And they, they pushed me to dig deep. And it was, it was a cool situation when we wrote the record because we would write some music and then we, I would come up with some vocal lines and then the guys would tell me what they thought about them. And, and, and they contributed to, you know, they would say, oh, change this word or do this or say that, or they'd, they'd hum a vocal line. I'd be like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. That's really cool. So it was a, a group effort between the three of us really putting this record together. And, and we worked exceptionally hard, and, and I think because of it, we grew a lot as songwriters once again, which is pretty cool because, you know, as we're already beginning to write for the fourth record, God willing, we feel even stronger about our songwriting writing capabilities now. So it was a pretty cool experience. Yeah, I can only imagine. You know, and it's funny because when I heard the first single, Victim, it seemed very <laughs> introspective to me. So that's like sort of the perfect example of what you were saying there with, you know, stripping things away and sort of looking at yourself in a mirror. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And that's why Victim was the first single because it was one of the first songs I came to the guys with. I mean, they had shown me the music and I came to them with the, the vocal ideas. And when I sang it, they were like, that's what we're talking about. They're like, that's the kind of lyrical content we want. And, and what I'm noticing is that there's about four or five songs from this record that people are really gravitating towards. And I'm noticing is that the difference is not the music this time. The difference is the lyrics is what they're gravitating towards. And that's, that makes it worthwhile to me because I was not in a good headspace writing it. I didn't want to go to these places the guys asked in the band asked me to, and um, it wasn't a fun situation. In fact, anyone that follows me on social media knows that I'm pretty open about my everyday life and the band and everything. And and while I was writing this record, I was in a terrible headspace. I was really unhappy, and I had to be to get the, these songs across. And 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 even though it was very fruitful in the, in the finale of it, it was. It wasn't a, an, an enjoyable process to go through for me personally. And I drove the band crazy while we were doing it. I drove them nuts. They wanted to kill me. Did you get some catharsis out of it, though, in the end? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you know, in fact, 
that that I got tons of concussions out of it. And what what I didn't um, realize was that it took until I heard the final mastered album to really understand what we had done. Like I was like against it. I was like, this is not the right way to go. I shouldn't be singing about these things. And the guys were like, you're an idiot. They're like, just keep doing what we tell you to do. And then when I heard the final product, I was like, oh man, you guys were so right, right on. Well, one of the songs that stood out for me and sort of spoke to me, probably my own interpretation of it anyway, was Counting All My Failures. Tell us a little bit about that one. Counting All My Failures, I think that the opening lyrics in Counting All My Failures, the opening line, it it might be the best lyric I've ever written. Um, uh, Just, I basically was just sitting there thinking about all the mistakes I have made in my life and then on, on in the band and on tour and with people and with myself and and that song just kind of poured out of me and you know the, the first lyric is um, count, I think it's counting all these failures I've had you know there's something that like basically there's not enough fingers to count them all up but I gotta I don't know my lyrics I just muscle memory know them but it just was literally like it just was it's just something that came to me like like, a lot of the lyrics on this record came to me. It wasn't like I had to think about it. And then when the guys heard it, you know, they would add or adjust, you know, their ideas, and it made it cooler, except for Turn Away. Nobody touched that one. That was 100% me by myself. You know, when I first heard Counting All My Failures, it's like, you know, part of it's like, you know, are these other people counting our failures? Because people love to do that. They love to judge. But in the end... Really, nobody's ever harder on us than we are on ourselves, and that anxiety could lead to what we're going to talk about on the next song, but that's sort of what it hit home for me was just how hard we are on ourselves. Yeah, and, and, you kind of, and sometimes you have to be just to grow. It's like, and, and I think if you're not, I think, every, like you said, everybody's really hard on themselves, but in private, in secret, and then they never do anything about it. Like, they might have insecurities or be mad at themselves because of the mistakes they made, but then they've never done anything to fix it. But in counting on my failures, I'm not just acknowledging it. Like, my point is to fix it, to get beyond it, you know, to acknowledge it and say, look, I have all these failures. I've made all these mistakes, but there's somewhere I can go. And turning to the other side of things, you already mentioned it, Turn Away. That's one of the reasons we're here today is to chat about it. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in this country. Over 45,000 suicides a year over the last few years, or about 130 a day. You guys recently wow. released Turn Away, an anti-suicide song. A song that almost wasn't on the record. It was like an 11th hour edition of the record, I think. Jamu dropped it on you unexpectedly, if memory serves. Tell us about the whole thing. We, we literally had made a packed as a band to have all the demos for the songs submitted to our producer Dave Fortman by a specific day. And that meant with vocals, with everything. So um, I thought I was done. I, I had sang on about 20 songs. I thought we had enough to, to make a record from, and I was happy with it. And the last possible day, Jabu just hands me this song, and he laughs at me. He goes, good luck. And I was furious. I was cursing at him. I was like, dude, I am so burn out, you know, from from basically being so emotional on this record, and you hand me a song the, the last day before we could start pre-production, but when I went and listened to the song, I was just blown away by how great the song was. I let Jabu know that I hated him, and then I said, great song, man, this is probably the best thing you've ever written, and then amazingly, the, the lyrics, the melodies, the vocal lines, the cadence, just was there like I didn't have to think about it it just was there to the point where I didn't demo it I didn't show the guys I didn't even show uh, the Dave Fortman until we did pre-production and when I laid it down on the recording was the first time I ever laid it down and it is probably the most sincere thing me and Jabu have ever done because we've been writing songs together since we were about 13 years old and this song musically is 100% him it's there's no one no other influence no other anything he wrote all the drums bass guitar everything and then by myself separately i wrote all the vocals and then we recorded it separately and then that's how the song turned out and it's it's just one of those things where i don't know if it was luck or it was meant to be but it was it's a special moment and we tried to hold it off the record because we didn't think it was very good and we were very wrong and thank god it's on the record because i think it's probably the most important song we've done to date you kept trying to keep it down and it kept reasserting itself (laughs) yeah yeah so uh, what made you want to 
tackle this topic because I mean suicide rates have grown market markedly over the last two decades and what do you attribute that to why was this the vehicle to address it for you I, I don't think I chose specifically to address suicide I just think that these lyrics it, it almost felt like they were like I was a conduit like they were given to me by somebody else and I was just kind of letting it out you know I, and, and when I read the lyrics back I was like wow this is this is anti-suicide. This is about not giving up, and it just it just felt right. It wasn't something I purposefully set out to do. So I, I you know, but I've I've gotten so many emails and messages from people letting me know how the song has touched them that I feel like you know it's one of the first times in my musical career that lyrically I did something right because I think when you get those messages from fans in multitude. It, you just you just feel like wow okay you did something right and I didn't even attempt to do it. It's not like I was like okay let's do a song for the troops and then I did it and they liked it but it was kind of like you know it, it was it was preconceived you know this just happened and it was as natural as natural could be. Right, more organic, which makes it, in my mind, always more, you know, genuine. And hopefully, as you said, it speaks to people, because just in the time that we've been sitting here talking today, statistically speaking, just in our country, at least a couple of people have taken their lives, which is tragic, because for those of you who are out there... Totally, listening, totally tragic. There's always somebody who cares, somebody who's always willing to listen. You just have to reach out, and hopefully this song helps with some people in that regard. Yeah, hopefully it does, you know, and, and, you know, you never know what's inside somebody's mind, their soul, their spirit, their heart, what they're going through. That's why I never want to even want to say I can pretend to relate to people because I think everyone's experience on earth is completely different, but it's just like, just try one more day. You never know what could happen. So. Well, and the heartbreaking thing, too, is, is aside from those people in pain struggling with whatever they're struggling with, the nature of technology and the, the disconnect people have from each other these days has made this such a bigger issue, and there's such a lack of empathy that we used to have when we were closer as a community of people. I agree, because you don't, you don't, you're not looking in someone's eyes when you're talking to them anymore, because we're, we're, we're talking through our phone screens and computer screens and you don't get that sense of humanity anymore and it's 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 sad in a way it's 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 really sad in a way and i think i believe when you you know when people put out posts and they get likes like it triggers serotonin in your brain and endorphins or something and it makes people feel good but at the same time it's fleeting and 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 it's it's a very lonely type of thing this existence we live now so i think people need to do spend more time communally and, and get closer to each other. I think it would help a lot. And, you know, I, I am very happy that a song like Turn Away, if, if whoever reaches can bring some kind of awareness to it and uh, hopefully help someone that is, you know, on the brink, maybe they'll uh, change their path. You know, it was funny. I was out having dinner the other night, and there was this family of four sitting at the table next to me. And they didn't talk to each other the entire night. They sat there playing on their cell phones or their tablets while in a restaurant having dinner as a family. I mean, that's really sad. Yeah. You know what I do when I go out um, with friends or with my girlfriend? I leave my cell phone at home because I don't want to be bothered by it. I don't want to feel attached to it. It's, 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 I just want to enjoy that person. So that's kind of like a little rule I have now. Yeah, I mean, if you can't at least leave it at home, turn it upside down, turn the volume off, leave it alone for a little bit and communicate with each other. But on a positive note, you guys are getting ready to hit the road with Scott Stapp and Messer. That's going to be an awesome tour. That's going to be an incredible tour and a different tour for us because normally we've done tours that are a little bit heavier. So it's funny, we put out a more aggressive record and we're going out with some less aggressive bands, but I'm excited about it because I really am a fan of Creed and Scott Stapp, and I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting the Messer guys. Yeah, and, and it's nice to have that, to, you know, that variety and, and diversity in who you play in front of to draw some more people in. I, t I totally agree, without a doubt. So I, I think it's going to be a great tour for us, and I can't wait to start. So, And as you already alluded to before we get out of here, you mentioned you're already working on the next record. What can you tell us about, about it so far? Well, so far, it's just, you know, uh, Jabu has just been coming up with some, you know, lists here and there that I'm, I, you know, I'm really impressed by because I think where we're going in the, these initial stages is going to be 
um, even take uh, the, the sense of musicality that we started with on Coma, take it up a notch, you know, push ourselves musically. I'll say we're going to go further with the, the emotional, weighty lyrics. And, um, you know, I'm hearing already, I'm hearing a lot of crushing grooves. We, you know, we love that. So um, we'll see where it ends up, but I know that's kind of our starting point at the moment. Excellent. All right, so just for fun on the way out the door, People have strange fascinations, hobbies, stuff like that. Serial killers, fantasy sports, anime. What, what's yours? <laughs> what's your thing, what's my strange, strange uh, thing? Um, lately, I've been collecting Incredible Hulk toys because I love the Incredible Hulk, and I'm not a collector. But people started giving me these Incredible Hulk toys because, you know, I love the Hulk. So I'm just like kind of going with it, and I'm anywhere anywhere I go, I pick a new one up. So I guess that's my new strange little hobby fascination. Nice, and of course, I don't know if you're like me. I try trying to avoid all the news these days. It's just you know puts me on edge. So are you binge watching anything good lately that's sort of entertaining and distracting? Uh, oh, that's all I do is we binge watch everything, anything on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu. When I'm not writing music or or, or on tour. I'm binge watching something just to take my mind off anything. What's the cool thing I'm watching right now? I'm watching a show called Longmire, and I don't even think it's on anymore. But it's just—it's pretty rad. That and Yellowstone. I'm loving Yellowstone. That's on right now. I haven't seen Yellowstone yet, but Longmire was an excellent series. I think it ran six seasons after Netflix sort of saved it. But fantastic show. Yep. Michael, thank you so much for taking the time. T Coma, fantastic record. Turn Away, obviously, a, a wonderful song with a great message. It's good to catch up with you. Look forward to seeing you on tour, and we're going to look forward to that next record, too. Thank you, brother. Great talking.